This is the Realty Classroom Podcast, episode number 203. Facts show you the way. Are you a real estate agent who wants to build your real estate job into a business without sacrificing your lifestyle, but you just can't seem to find the right plan or any plan to help you get there? Well, then, hey, you are definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Realty Classroom and the host of this podcast. Now, to help you take immediate action to get started in the right direction, I've created a free jumpstart course for you that's waiting at free agentgift.com. I know course gives you the willies. You don't really want to do any homework, but I'm asking you to please take better care of yourself by getting strategic in the real estate agent business. And I'm going to give you a free copy of what I use, the wireframe I use, I coach from, I use it every day. And I wish I had it a long time ago when I started freeagentgift.com. All right, let's get started. Facts, facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts show you the way. So I I really wanted to talk about the the facts because it keeps coming up over and over and over in in a lot of areas of my life as a real estate coach, as a real estate broker owner, as a real estate agent. All of these things are roles that I play every single week. And I noticed that as I look back on time, I say to myself, my gosh, if I had just simply slowed down and looked at all the facts that were available to me. And that's a little bit of a dilemma because there are a lot of facts. In fact, there might be an infinitesimal, never-ending number of facts because you can always dig deeper and deeper and deeper. So scientifically, I mean, you can imagine what it's like to be a scientific researcher and how many combinations and facts. It can get overwhelming. In fact, it can get paralyzing. So how do we chunk this up? My favorite thing to do, find something that's important to talk about and chunk it up for myself and then share it with you. Well, the first thing that I did was I understood by just looking at the word perception. That's a really important word. Perception is not necessarily true at all. Let me take you to the side of the business that if you've been in the business a while, you'll know this. Maybe if you're new or thinking about getting into the business, you might not know this. But most sellers have a perception of the way that a property is sold. And their perception is that comes from marketing. But in our seller plan that we use in my brokerage, The Griffin, we talk very specifically about price first. Because it's a fact that if you put the wrong price on a really great property and you have really great whiz-bang marketing that's deep and rich and compelling, it won't matter at all. So the fact of the matter is that the order of things is price first. It's not marketing first. It's one of the biggest tragedies in this business is that we let the seller consumer drive how we actually explain to them the fact of how a property gets sold. And again, I know some of you might be on the fringes arguing away in your head saying, oh, he's wrong about that because, you know, I, I always list my properties and they, they just go and it's my great marketing. I do open houses and I do this. I, I do too. I do what you do. And I've been around a long time, which means I have seen up markets. So a really good market is booing the price. So pricing it right isn't as hard. It's like horseshoes and hand grenades. As long as you're close in an upswinging market for the seller, you can get the job done. But as I'm doing this recording of this podcast, uh, we are beginning to move into a marketplace that's going to get more difficult in pricing it right. I see that in my primary market in Boston, which for years has been a super strong market, but I have had to have my clients have a very like serious discussion about price. They see my marketing. They see how good I am at digital marketing. They understand my push marketing, meaning physically being in the house and getting there and, and extolling the virtues of this property versus that. That might start to border on sales. So, I think really perception is something that we can see. We're under the pressure of the perception of the seller. And on the buy side, for example, a lot of buyers are running around with their smartphones and they're looking at the latest app that can give them access to properties. And they have a perception that that's how they're going to get the best deal. Well, the truth is the best deals come from being represented 
by the best agent who has real hyperlocal market knowledge and, and all sorts of other skills. I could go on and on about representation, but that's really the first step. It's not just getting access to a property and showing up to an open house that all of a sudden gets you home on that. I know that. In fact, as I'm <clears throat> doing this podcast right now, I am dealing with a double-ended deal. And so- I think in the beginning, the perception was that, well, maybe that's going to somehow give them a competitive advantage on price. Well, that's not true because I'm just there to extol the virtues of the property and make a market for it that's fair and equitable for both of these parties as a disclosed dual agency. And and so I have to give them the facts about the math and I have to give them the facts about the property so that I can lead them to their own conclusion. So the perception is, the good news is, I'm pretty good at what I do. So I've empowered them with great information and they're happy they came directly to me. But perhaps the perhaps perception, he said, of what was going to happen was very different from what did and to their benefit, it's all going to work out and for the benefit of my seller and everybody's happy in this double-ended deal. So <clears throat> the next thing is let's talk about our facts. So so those are the perceptions, but now we have to have these facts to to really be better with sellers using facts and be better with buyers using facts. So the the first thing that I want to talk about are the facts that are in the multiple listing service. See there are facts that are easily found in these mathematical results. So when I say mathematical loosely, I mean statistics, uh, really just the stats of what happens and maybe the math when you look at the sold to ask ratios and things like that and, and you calculate it, uh, the the median and the mar uh, average price. All those things are mathematical facts and where are they? Well, they're sitting for realtors, at least people that have joined the multiple listing service. They're all sitting right there. Not that a real estate agent who's not a non-member of the association, they can also get facts that are out there because these facts are tracked publicly. So all sorts of sales information is tracked at the local municipality level. So there are facts everywhere and they're easily found. And so what we did was we started to think and frame this in, in the sense of let's, let's start to give a factual answer to the global question that as people are starting consumers, buyers and sellers, are starting to move in towards wanting to do something in the context of real estate, They most of them ask the question, how's the market? So when you fall into a conversation, you say, oh, I'm a real estate agent. Oh, really? How's the market? Well, I would love you to answer that factually and not say, well, we're drifting into a buyer's market or we've been in a seller's market for a long time. The great Zig Ziglar, uh, a great motivational speaker who's now since passed, I heard him speak live and I'll never forget him saying, why be a wandering generality when you can be a meaningful specific? See, a wandering generality and general statements and a, you know opinions are a dangerous place when you are a professional real estate agent. So we go into the MLS every month and we have actually a, a statistics expert go in for us and grab all the statistical evidence and put it together in a one pager. I mean, a one pager. If you're curious and you want to see what that looks like, you can go over to my brokerage, thegriffin.co, T H E G R I F F I N.co, and you can see my market updates. You can see what they look like. We post the, the PDF. I talk about the stats too in, in a very factual way as well because I'm trying to position myself as that professional talking in terms of specifics, facts. These are mathematical facts. So it's easy to do that, right? Makes, makes a, a lot of sense. And I, I would say also, when it comes to your business too, this is something I'll be talking about this in, in my other podcast for the Griffin in the agent plan, but, but your statistical evidence as to how you're doing tells an enormity of truth too. So I think what was stunning to me when I first started to really get smart about this because I was dumb to the extent that I was just trying to do as many transactions as I could and I was never really looking at myself the facts of my marketplace. What was the average price? What was the median price? And how were my facts compared to that? And it turns out I was doing a lot of deals which felt good and I was a grinder and nose to the grindstone per se, but it wasn't smart business. 
Smart Business told me, hey, your median and average sale are below both the median and average for the main area you within which you're working and you're missing all this luxury business. I instantly stopped my perception that volume of, of transactions was best for me and I changed into a factual pursuit of going after much more high-end properties. And, and I started by marketing and, and using that factual information to change my marketing direction to at least try to be targeting and soliciting business that was median priced and above. And boy, did that change everything for me. So those facts came to me. So here I had these facts. I could talk to the seller or buyer about how's the market. I could talk to myself about making it a better business. That built a more factual basis for me making my case when I went in to help sellers and buyers at the high end. I mean, again, in the beginning, you don't have it. So you're just trying to stay with market facts, but then you have a resume based in facts, not how great you are and how much integrity you have and all these things that you think are value based that somehow make you different. I would hope you all have a good value and a moral compass uh, per se as you go into this professional business, but to be different, you need to speak the professional language of facts, not generalities. And believe me, smart people hear the language of facts much better than they do anything else. And they lean in towards you when you speak like that. I know this firsthand. So study the facts because they tell the truth. So you have to become a student of this. And I think it, it's really hard to break bad, lazy-minded habits, non-academic habits. But I'm trying to make this so dang easy, like literally, if you would look at the median and the average price in your market once a month, if you would look at the sold to ask ratio the average of that, in other words, the sold price divided by the average price, right? The average sold price divide, but divided by the average asking price, that's going to give you a real sense of negotiable items, right? In other words, in Seattle, one of the markets my brokerage, the Griffin, is now um, licensed in, in one of the counties there, one month, there was a 107% sold to ask right? Sold to last asking price ratio, 107%, which means on average, they were bidding the properties up 7%. The next month, when there was enough factual information in this dramatically changing market, it was 97%. That's a stunning turnaround. So studying that allows us within a 30-day time frame in a business that moves slowly, it allowed us to educate our, our agents to go out there and say, good news, buyers. Good news. Things are negotiable finally here in Seattle. Things are working better now for you. Doesn't mean you're necessarily going to steal something, but there's a little bit more flexibility. Then we went and looked at the inventory number. That was up significantly. Now, it still wasn't a lot of inventory. So people that state a perceptive opinion that there's not a lot of inventory, they'd be right. But the increase was 70% from one month to 1.7 months worth of inventory for sale. That's significant. That's a good indication that there are more choices. There's more negotiability, all a good story for the buyer. But this is what's interesting about the truth about facts too. Does that necessarily mean that all of a sudden a seller should panic? Not at all. Not at all. Again, if you look at those statistical facts from the seller's perspective, they're still very low inventory. So if they're going through the plan that we offer in our brokerage, which considers the pricing at right range for their property, it considers their condition. Can they do anything to improve their pricing position through conditioning? And what about staging to put the sizzle on that stake before all the marketing takes place? So you see the facts are just there to tell the truth about what's going on right now. And in fact, there are plenty of facts to look back in recent history, or you could go back to the, 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 the previous market crash and try to learn from that to see if we're in the similar type. So it goes on and on. But just study the simple ones first and then study the ones that you need to make the case for whatever it is you're trying to make the case for, right? So that's how that works. Now, the last point here is facts change and they move all around. 
So this isn't something that you hear me talk about today. You do it for a couple months and you say it was great. This is something you do forever. You got that? This is something you do forever. You pursue the studying of these facts because they're constantly changing. I mean, they're changing minute by minute as, I mean, when I say that, you can't see them in the field, but the minute something gets agreed upon, like I just finished a deal, a negotiation before this is coming in. I know signatures are happening while I'm, I'm recording the podcast. That's a fact that's not even recorded in the multiple listing service yet. So things are changing. In the minute that that goes under agreement, people will see that the recent price reduction led to a quick sale versus a long time on the market before that. So now people are starting to see where that trend is. Anybody else that's thinking about selling is going to see that trend. And they can tell you whatever they want. Oh, you gave it away. Oh, no, no, we didn't. We found the market for it today. That's the fact. That's the truth. That's the way that it works, right? So this is moving faster than people think it is. It's just that it doesn't show up very quickly. So you want to, as a real estate agent, really be on top of the facts and staying in pursuit of what's happening. You can't really let up. Even if you take a vacation, it's okay. You know, just check in on the stats. I mean, anybody from a phone these days or from their laptop, even while on vacation, could say, oh, the end of the month came. What do the statistics look like? Because if you get a call from somebody while you're away, you're going to probably take it unless you're really on lockdown somewhere in the woods. And you need to be able to answer that because you're the professional and people are relying on us to be factually based not perception, not feelings, not making things up. All right, let me go back and go through these facts. Facts show you the way as the subject, and here are the four key points. Just recognize that perception is not necessarily true at all. Whether the perception is coming from the sellers and buyers who start to heap their perception on you, and then you wilt because you don't know what's happening, so you start to give your perception of what's happening, that's an ugly place. Next, There are facts that are easily found in mathematical results. And where are those mathematical and statistical results found? In the multiple listing service that you most likely are already paying for. Three, study the facts. Because they're telling you the truth of what's happening in the moment. There's no denying what SOLD says. It's sold for this price on this date, period. Right? That's a fact. It, this this was the average price for this month. That's a fact. This was the median price. That's a fact. Those are facts of the business. So study them. And lastly, facts change all the time and they move quickly. So stay in pursuit forever. As long as you are an active real estate agent trying to make a living in this business, you must stay in pursuit. Let me summarize it this way. One of the greatest mistakes that real estate agents make is trying to build their business upon what they perceive to be the way things work, or even worse, how they feel things work. Now, the best way to build a real estate agent business is to stay focused on the facts that are very easily found. Facts about the market are found in the multiple listing service, and facts about how your business works are found in your accounting for your income and expenses. You must be realistic and confront the facts to know the truth about how things work. And that will help you always be profitable in spite of what's going on in the marketplace. All right, remember, you can take immediate action and get started in the right direction with our free, simple business plan that's waiting for you at freeagentgift.com. I can't say this enough times. Please humor me. Go get a copy of this thing, freeagentgift.com, especially the one-page infographic where I chunk up the entire business, and that has helped me, especially over the last 10 years, really pursue the facts that mattered. My business, per deal, transaction-wise, is stunningly different. And I mean stunningly different, simply because I got more planned, more strategic, in a simple way. Nothing I'm teaching is complicated these days. But it is amazing how hard it is to try to get people to understand that. Freeagentgift.com gets you started. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. We also post this content on YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe to the Realty Classroom channel. We'd also appreciate it if you would share our content with other real estate agents, just like you. Sharing is caring, so get it out there. Let's help each other. Let's make this business a little bit better. You owe me nothing in return. Just help somebody. But remember this, I say at the same time at the end of these all the time, 
Nobody's coming for you. Absolutely nobody. So go get to work on your business and we'll see you in the next episode to help you do just that. Thanks.